In this video, we will have a look at the scripter. This is probably the only plugin that most users have not even loaded because it has to do with programming. But you don't need any programming knowledge to use this plugin. They have made it really easy to change the parameters without having to write code. And you will see that it is so easy to come up with some good ideas. Now, the scripter plugin is using JavaScript as its programming language. So if you know JavaScript, you can create your own MIDI plugins or you can modify existing ones and change the script of the presets. A small note on that, if you are an advanced user and you want to do that, to ensure compatibility, make sure you install the latest software updates. As the JavaScript version that Logic is using is determined by the JavaScript core framework version that is installed in your system. With all of that out of the way now, let's get into it. Now we will only look at a few examples, but you can go further. You can literally load the plugin on anything and start experimenting. It's one of those plugins that you don't know what is going to happen when you experiment with it. And that can be very fun. Now, as you can see, I have three instruments loaded up. Let's actually start with the drum set. Now let's load a scripter. And this is what we get. So we have the script editor where we can actually write code and make all the changes that we want. And we have this little window here with the presets right here and the global parameters. Now, if you choose a preset, so for the drums, they're right here. Let's do this one, for example. You can see that the script editor is changing. It's loading the code for that preset. And you can either go ahead and change the code on the script. You can just do anything or you can just go ahead and make changes in the global parameters. Now, this preset is good if, if you have already programmed a bit. So let's use something else. So let's do, where is it? Drum probability sequencer. Now, even though I have nothing on my piano roll, you will hear a drum beat as soon as I press play. All of that is generated based on the script. So let's make some changes. We have up to four voices. That is not limiting because as you know, we can load more instances of the same plugin. So if you're going to play around with more voices, load more scripters. So voice one is C1. And in the piano roll, we can see that C1 is kick. I like that, we can keep it. So let's go down, voice two, 2 is D1 and D1 is snare center. So I don't want that. I'm going to change it to rim shot. So that would be E1. I'm going to change that to E1, which is rim shot. Then voice 3 is F sharp 1. So that would be F sharp 1, hi hat close. We can also keep that. I don't like the open hat, which I'm guessing is the last voice. A sharp 1. So a sharp one, that's it. So let's change that to something less invasive. Mm. Let's do right bell. So that would be F2. F2, there you go. And now let's listen to what we have. Now we can change how the bit will be formed by playing around with the probability. Now let's go all the way up and have a look at the voices. As you can see, it has 16 steps. And basically, you can think of it as a 16 step sequencer, where you choose the probability of how often its voice will be triggered when the sequencer runs. For example, if I take all the steps down to zero, except the first one, let's do that, zero, zero, and this one, now, every first bit of the bar will have a kick on it, and it will always be played back because it is set to 100%. And no other step will have a kick because everything is set to 0%. Now, let's say that I want to add another kick right before the one, so I have to go to the later step, step 16. Uh, let's take that also to 100%, so another kick will be added now.
Now what if I want to add another kick in the middle of the beat, so say around 7, 8, let's do 7, but let's not go all the way up to 100. So let's go, let's do 50%. So there's a 50% uh, chance that sometimes it will be triggered and sometimes it won't. There you go. And that way we can shape the beat based on probability. Now let's move on to some more melodic stuff. So let's actually listen to the piano that I have here. Super simple, just single notes. Now let's load a scripter. And let's see how we can spicy this one up. So let's see, let's load the, what's a good one? The guitar strummer. Now this preset imitates a guitar strum. Let's have a listen to it. So what I hear is that it made the first two notes a major chord and then the third one a minor. That would be fine if it was a major scale, but what if I want this to be a minor? Now one way would be to load the transposer, but there is also the option of doing it internally on the scripter. So if we scroll all the way down, we get to chord assignments. So let's see, for every C chord, it creates a C major. So let's change that to C minor. And then on a minor scale, the third, which we have here, the median chord is a major. So let's change the D sharp. Uh, which we will think as E flat, let's change that to a D sharp uh, major, which we'll be thinking as an E flat major. And then the next one is A flat. So we are looking for G sharp. And this is a major because the sub median chord is a major. So let's change that to G, G, G sharp major. There you go, G sharp major. And lastly, the G. That can be either, depending on the scale you use. So we can just leave it at major. Let's have a listen now. Okay, now let's go back up and let's make a few changes. We can actually also, instead of strum, use the arpeggio. Let's make a few changes. Uh, let's see, let's make change the division. Let's, no, that's not what, down here. Let's do, see, let's, let's try both. Let's try this one. No, it's too fast, let's do this one. I like this one. So a random division, I don't want random. So the way, if I increase this percentage, you will see that it will introduce random arpeggios. Let's have a listen. Doesn't sound very stable, so I'm going to take this one all the way down. The velocity curve, that is fine. Okay, I'm pretty happy with what we've got here, so let's push it a bit more and see what we can come up with. So let's load another scripter. Let's close that and let's load... Let's load a note repeater. Actually, have a listen just to that. Set this one up first and then reintroduce that. That's fine, let's try 16th notes.
like that. It's too loud now, let's take it down a bit. That's nice. So let's load another scripter. And for this one, let's actually use the harmonizer. That is way, way too much. So let's start do some more easier harmony. So let's do a perfect fifth. So let's do seven semitones. That's too loud. Let's take the octave of the second transposition down a bit. I think that sounds good, just a bit in the background, just to fill it up a bit. Nice, let's load another scripter. And for this one, let's go with, let's introduce some randomness on it. So let's do random offset probability. That's actually pretty good already. Okay, that's our piano done. Let's actually do some bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this region down here. Let's have a listen at the organ. It sounds good, but we can beef it up with some octaves. So no need to program them in. I can simply use the scripter. So I'm going to bring up the scripter, close that, and then let's use the harmonizer again. So what I want is some octaves. So let's uh, let's actually have a listen at how, how it sounds now. It's very, very muddy. So we can leave the octave lower down here. That's fine. And then for the first transposition, let's do an octave higher. Sounds good, so before and after, before, and after, and let's listen with the piano. noise so let's add the drums and see what it sounds like yeah I don't think the drums fit but I would most definitely go in and prog them, program them individually without the script or plugin but as you can see we have created something uh, that would normally take ages to program or play and we've done that very, very easily with the scripted plugin. And again, lots of happy accidents and surprises. So I would suggest that you experiment with it a bit, because it can produce some really nice stuff and can generate good ideas. And that's it with uh, the scripter. Until the next one.